Jeremiah 8, starting in verse number 5. This is the word of God. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Every one turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree, and the leaves shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defensed cities, and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. And for a time of health, and behold, trouble. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones, for they are come. And have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. When I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwelleth in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Thank you, Pastor Chad. What a powerful passage of Scripture. If you're watching online, I would like for you to Share this, and I'd like to ask the congregation, when you get out, share this, because our, our country needs to hear what I'm going to preach this morning. Amen. And I want you to be real patient with me at the beginning as I lay the foundation for the message. And if you're patient with me and stay with me, I think you'll get where I'm going 
and we can see the Lord glorified and hopefully a step toward real revival and real cleansing. That's what we need most. Amen. I want to preach this morning. I'll go ahead and give you the title and then I'm going to just lay a foundation, explain the word to you, and then preach a thought to you this morning. I want to preach on this side, America, a ecotonic moment in time. We are a pre prefix generation. All of you know that. For example, we use the word mega, megabytes, mega church. Another uh, prefix we use is the word echo, as ecotones or ecosystem. I want to say this to you America is presently in the midst of an ecotonic moment in time. When you say an ecotone, what are you talking about? It's a biological term. It's, it's where a particular place where two ecosystems join. Let me illustrate, if I may. When I, I like going to Cocoa Beach, Florida. I like it real well. And I like to fish in the Banana River and also the Indian River. And both of those flow into the ocean. Uh, we got fresh water going into the ocean water. And there's a lot of probabilities with it, a lot of uh, possibilities with it, because it's where the fish will come up in that ecosystem and they'll lay eggs. But there are also some problems with it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I said all this and all that to say this. At this very moment of time, we're experiencing an ecotonic stage in America. Here it is. One is the modern world, and the other is the postmodern world. The world in which many of us, baby boomers, experienced and were very proud of our history is being destroyed right before our face. Our world is transforming at breakneck speed. Somebody help me preach. And here's the, here, here's the problem. Here it is. We got two worlds merging. Two worlds merging. And you know it. And I know it. And everybody in this church ought to know it. There's two worlds, two, two cultures that are clashing. Now here's the problem. How are we going to promote our Christian heritage, our True faith Amen. to a postmodern world. Somebody help me preach. See, here's the problem the Western world doesn't debate much about whether the Bible is true. That's not the debate in our Western world. The Western world debate is is the Bible relevant? Not that it's true, because a bunch of them don't believe it's true. But is it relevant? Is a book that was written during the Mid-Eastern times by 40 human authors over 1,500 years, most of them Jewish, but not all, is that book relevant for today? Amen. That's what we... That's the problem we face because we got these two cultures, a wicked, divisive, ungodly culture, and then the culture of our forefathers that wrote the Declaration of Independence that stood on Christian heritage, and there is a great, great battle going on. And I say to you, it is time some of us take a stand 
and say to this world, yes, the Bible's relevant. Yes, we need to preach repentance. Yes, our nation needs to turn back to God. I'll tell you what our problems are. We have a generation with no morals. We have no absolutes, no moral absolutes in the home any longer. Very little prayer in the home. Am I preaching? No moral absolutes in school. The school teachers are having to learn how to talk to certain groups of people in their school now, accommodate them. In other words, accommodate their weakness and promote their wickedness. And tragically, boy, this is tragically, it has crept into our churches. Great Britain today will only have 5% of their population attend church. And I want all you to know that moral values never last any more than one to two generations unless they're a revival to turn the tide. The divorce will rate is over 50%. Jeremy said in that reading he did during the song, the Gideons cannot pass out a Bible in the schools, but Planned Parenthood can pass out condoms. The gender lines in our schools and our country are blurred again. Ladies and gentlemen, Genesis says what a man is and what a woman is. The Bible makes it clear the distinction between a man and a woman. And I say this, anybody that tries to go across those gender lines, it's perverted, it's ungodly, it's wicked, and somebody needs to take a stand. This this is not a Democrat issue. This is not a Republican issue. This is a Bible moral issue. This this is far bigger than politics. It's the hope of a nation. It's the death of a nation. God help us. We redefine marriage. 1.27 1.27 babies are aborted yearly. Hold a minute. Yes, we all were thankful for the recent ruling. But I don't want any of you to think that the abortion issue is over. But what it is now is coming to the people. We're going to find out who Christians are. It's coming to the people. And who you vote in is your legislators. Somebody help me preach right now. I'll tell you what, most Christians, and it's sad to say, they do not vote the Bible. They vote some kind of agenda. God help us. I'm going somewhere. Y'all stay with me. Here's the, here's the point. I want to give it to you. With all what's, uh, that's wrong, people are not asking why, but they're asking what. I'll explain. We had those 20, I think 21 people killed in that Texas city, in that school. And the first thing is, what can we do? And the answer was, do away with our Second Amendment rights. Ladies and gentlemen, the gun is not the issue. The heart of the wicked people is the issue. The moral ground of the the people in this society is the issue. What's our answer for drugs? I'll tell you what our answer for drugs is. For the government 
to give clean needles out? What's our answer to, to AIDS? I'll tell you what it is. Uh, more education and safe sex. Am I preaching? The prophet Jeremiah. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Lived and ministered in a day like ours today. The message, yes, Chad, is to Judah. But the application of this message is very evident. It speaks to us in America. I'll tell you what happened to Judah. They were blessed. How many of you believe our nation has been blessed? How many, how many people here over 70 years old, or I say between 65 and 70, raise your hand. You've lived a while. You've been blessed. You know what our country used to be. You know what we used to stand for. You know all the blessings of the day. Judah was blessed, but they forgot the roots. They forgot God. And in 586 B.C., they were defeated by Nebuchadnezzar. He came in, and, and they, they, were, they went into 70 years of captivity. You know the story. And it's with this that Jeremiah comes with a weeping heart. Weeping heart. And he asked in Jeremiah 2, 6, where is the Lord that brought you out of Egypt? Where is he? Jeremiah 2, 27, he said, uh, they have turned their back on me, Jeremiah. Then Jeremiah is going, and I want you to follow me closely this morning, is going to not deal with the what, Jeff. Jeremiah is going to deal with the why. Amen. I want you to follow me if you've got your Bible. I want to show you four things, and I'll be done. I want you to stay with me. First of all, look at verse number five. He asked a question there, why? Why then is the people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding and they hold fast deceit? This why is for the American public. Why have we slidden back? In the last 60 years, you want to know when it all started happening? About 55 to 60 years ago. We had strong values. We, we, our kids prayed in school. How many of you 65 or over remember praying in school? I prayed in school. I don't look like I turned out too bad. Can I give you the prayer that we prayed? I want you to hear the prayer that they kicked out of school. Let me give it to you. Almighty God, and if y'all agree with this prayer, you tell me. Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependency on you and beg your blessings on our parents, students, and teachers, and our country. That was the prayer. In the case 1980, Stone versus uh, Graham, they also took the Ten Commandments out of school. You want to know why we need metal detectors in school? You know why? You want to know why we don't need uh, armed gunmen in school? Because they took out prayer. They took out God. They don't want anything to do with what's right. That's why we're in the mess we're in. Look in verse 8. I'm going to read some more. How do we say we are wise? This, this country, we got people think they're smart. And I think they're dumber than a box of rocks. And the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain may he do it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. Look at verse number 9. The wise men are ashamed. They're dismayed. And taken, lo, they have rejected, listen to me, the word of the Lord. You know what the problem is? They reject God's word. Amen. Hey, I want you all to know something. I, I, I'm not going to fight this morning. 
I am not going to fight. But we've got a bunch in our churches that are rejecting the law of the Lord. We kind of even, can't even find out which one's right. Good preaching, Reverend. We're a mess. Am I preaching? Thank God for Josiah. You remember the story of Josiah? When the, when the temple was ravished and he sent Hilkiah and he found the book. You know what we need this morning? We need to find the book. We need to find the answer. We need to find the antidote. We need to find that which will get us fixed. That is the word of God. It's precious. It's powerful. It's piercing. It's the word of God. It, thank God. It's inspired. And, but I want you to notice. Secondly, look at verse 14. Am I doing all right? Second, why? Why do we sit still? That hit me right in the face. That is a word for the American pew. Now, I want you to listen. I'm going to take my time. Many church members have bought into the liberal view. Many church members have been manipulated by the media. Many church members have bought into public propaganda. This last pandemic, we have been manipulated. We have been oppressed. We have been put under the thumb of government and the media. And every time the media says there's an outbreak and we jump up and get scared as a bunch of rabbits. We've let them and the liberals direct us in a path that's not healthy. There's people not in church yet because of it. We've, they've left the Judeo-Christian philosophy and listened to what I call the plurist or deist philosophy. I want to I wanna give you something this morning. Will you listen carefully? See, I really believe there's something wrong with the American pew. Hold a minute. I want to say something to you. This ain't about politics. Amen. I'm not preaching politics this morning. Absolutely not. I believe Democrats are saved, Republicans are saved, and Independents are saved. But I believe some Democrats are lost, and Republicans lost, and Independents lost. It's not about that. It's about us getting away from God. Can I, can I just read something to you? I just want y'all to hear this, okay? Have you all ever, any of y'all ever re- read the charters of the original 13 colonies? Anybody? How many's read the charters? Just four or five of you. Can I, can I quote a few of them to you? Rhode Island, established in 1683. Here's what they said in their charter. We submit ourselves unto the Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Maryland has in their charter, we were formed by a pious zeal for the preaching of the gospel. Joe Biden's Delaware says in their charter, form for the propagation of the gospel. Connecticut, form for the preservation and purity of the gospel. At one time, the New England states was the heart of the gospel. And now we're sending missionaries to all those states because they're pagan and lost and miserable and wicked and so far from God. And before you start bragging about the Bible Belt, we're a mess in the Bible Belt. A 
I'll tell you what our problem is. We've said seal too long. See, the salt's lost its savior. Let's just, just let me say something to you. A prominent, big time Southern Baptist preacher in the last few months ordained three women on his staff. That particular group of people, and there's some good men in the Southern Baptist Convention, and I'm not saying they're not, but that convention has got so wicked and so far from God. And hold on a minute. Before we bash them very much, we better start talking about us independent fundamentals too. I tell you what happened to our independent. We got a bunch of independent fundamentals that are so liberal and loose. They don't use the King James Bible anymore. They're, they're wicked. Then on the right, we got a bunch of haters who don't love anybody. They point their finger and judge people and how they dress and how they act. Ladies and gentlemen, God ain't looking on the outside. God's looking on the inside. Somebody asked me the other day, one of them right wingers, said, don't you bother you if somebody comes to your church with long hair and tattoos and, and, and nose rings. I said, absolutely not. Jesus said, I didn't come to call the righteous. I came to call sinners. What's wrong with us? Somebody needs to get right in the middle, right where the Bible is, and stand on it instead of some preference or some ignorance. Am I preaching? I'll get some hate over this, but that's okay. Number three, look at verse 19. I'm hurrying. I, I got to get these last two done. Are you at verse 19? Say amen. amen. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger and their graven images and with strange vanities? This is the why for the American politician. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say this, and I hope you take it in the right spirit. Those people in Congress, both Democrat and Republican, make me sick. They provoke me. You want to talk about getting me in the flesh? That crowd, gets, and not just Democrats. No, 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 no. Some of you get off that stuff. Those bunch of fence straddling Republicans wouldn't take a stand if a devil came with a pitchfork right in front of them. Hey, 13 of them just voted some of our rights away and our gun rights. Am I preaching? This is an idolatrous land. Amen. A land where, you know, in the Old Testament, they offered babies up for sacrifice. And we called that wicked, Lois. But how can we stand and call that wicked and we kill 1.27 million babies a year? And you say, why are you angry? Anybody be angry over that. Amen. I'm going to say this. America is an agnostic nation towards spiritual things. Yeah. Yes, Our three branches of government, they, they raise their nose against what you and I believe. Amen. I will close. Uh, this one's the most important one. Look at verse 22. I wish I had Mildred to Blake here this morning. I really do. I'd have her come and sing this this morning. She's one of my heroes. This is her favorite song. Here's what he says. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Notice this why. 
Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? This is a why for the American pulpit. People in Jeremiah's day did not repent. They hung their harps on the willow tree. And you say, Preacher Smith, what are you saying? A why to the American public. I want all y'all to know there is a bomb of Gilead. There is a great physician. There is one that will heal our nation, heal your soul, save your soul, uh, heal your family, take care of your family. But our problem is we have rejected him and we have turned our back upon him. Tell you what we've chosen. We've chosen the Calvinistic view that does have no gospel in it. We've chosen the contemporary movement that isn't nothing more than a flesh concert. And don't you go out here and say, well, Preacher Smith don't like any new music. Yes, I do. If it's got words that glorify God, yes, I do. But what I don't want is some worship leader who some of them, uh, I read two famous ones, done left and believe there's no God at all now. They come to church with their little chain around their neck and their little T and their blue jeans with holes all in them to kind of relate to people. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's wickedness. You ain't going to get no healing that, that way. And by the way, the charismatics don't have no answer. All they are is a bunch of emotion. No, I'll tell you what we need. We need to get back to the fact of what the gospel is. It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And, and preach that. And preach Jesus. And preach the love of God. And preach that the blood covers every sin. That's what we need to do. Hey, by the way, it's still working. It's still, this church is a testimony. It still works. I'll tell you what we need. I'm closing. Lois, come. We need to find the book. The lady's getting baptized. She can come on. We need to find the book. Heads bowed. Here's my invitation. Twofold. How many of you know that you know that you know you're saved? Raise your hand. Hold it up. Thank you. How many are not sure you're saved? How many in this room never really ever trusted Christ? And you say, Preacher Smith, I really need to be saved. Pray for me. Raise your hand. Slip it up. Now here's invitation number two. How many of you church members will say this morning, I'm not going to stay still. We need revival. And I want, I want all of you to stand. And I wonder how many will come up around this altar and pray for revival. And pray. And if you're online, would you bow down by your table or your bed and just pray? I want you to come and just sit around this altar. Feel these, feel these outways. Say, I am concerned. I do want to see revival. I I know there's hope. I know there's a bomb in Gilead. Father, touch this invitation, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you coming?